everybody and welcome to another piece from the Mad Ravens. Most people have heroes. My heroes are ordinary people. And this piece is based on a song I wrote for an uncle and aunt of mine some years ago. It's called Another Day Together. Alton and Rose lived in a small village called Priorstown outside Termon Fecken in County Louth. And they're my heroes. This piece is called Another Day Together. Sundown seeps the front field You watch from the window And comment on the people passing by And as you pour my tea out You lean your hand on mine And you know it's going to be Another day together And the winds from Black Hall blow us to talk of what happened today and as you pour my tea out you lean your hand on mine and you know it's going to be another day together down along the back lane I sometimes hear you laugh and the words of some old song we used to sing and you ask some silly question about the farm or the weather. I laugh a silly answer, then we both laugh together. And the wind through Black Hall blows the cobwebs away and leaves us to talk of what happened today. There's a photograph on the dresser You often shine the glass Just to keep the dust from fading memories And you still stand here beside me And it still feels good to know you With the promise of another day together And the wind through Black Hall blows the car us to talk of what happened today and as you pour my tea out you lean your hand on mine and you know it's going to be another day together Rose, I'm going down to look at that heifer on the bottom field. There was something not right about her last night. I'll call in for a cup of tea and a slice of that batch loaf on the way back before I go up the yard for the milking. Huh? No, I left me wellies outside the back door. I'd be a brave man that would tramp cow shite on your lovely kitchen tiles. I learned that lesson a long time ago. Push the door after me, will you? I've me hands full. She'd be at the table now, leaning on her thumbs and knuckles and looking out the window before I get halfway down the ditch. The big screen, she calls it. There'll be not much past that big screen that Rose won't have an opinion about. Essie Lawler'll be passing it with her bicycle in a few minutes. The two shopping bags hung onto the handlebars as she bends up the hill. I never seen Essie actually riding the bicycle, but she maintains it saves her back returning from Dinny's with a full load. You can get anything from a potty to a pound of butter in Diddy's. Oh Jesus, he's a serious character. A while back, Essie was getting her groceries and the paper and she spotted a ham hanging invitingly on a hook above the counter. Dinny, says she, is the ham salty today? Dinny looked at her with the tongue drooling through the toothless grin at the thought of a good sale and proceeded to take down the ham off the hook and let the same tongue take a good lick along the length of ham. Wiping away the drool and the same toothless grin, he looks at her straight across the counter and says, Divil a bit, Miss Lawler. I'd recognise a good Brady ham any time. 
as he had a face now would scour the cream and decline the ham. Staying with the ham team, Essie was over his last Saturday night. We had a bit of a hoolie in the house in Usher. There was singing and dancing, all sorts of carry on. Rows of the hand sandwiches and the tea. And there was a slice of materia cake for everybody. But Essie isn't too fond of the fat on the ham as you might have picked up. So she discreetly slipped the sliver of fat from the crust of the sandwich and held it in her closed palm. Only trouble now being how to rid herself of it. And to compound matters didn't Paddy Mary ask her up for a dance. There she was, gliding round the kitchen on her toes, one hand in Paddy's and the other with the offending fat resting on Paddy's shoulder. Anyways, it was a fast pace and the fat began to melt in her hand and run down pat the back of Paddy's bright nylon shirt. But we all saw it, but Essie never blinked nor flinched. Paddy shuffled his shoulder knowing something was amiss, but he wasn't going to waste a dance with the most eligible of Spencers for the sake of a dribble of Brady's best bacon. Anyway, the two grandsons will be passing soon on the way home from school. I knock great crack out of them too. They'll wave in at Granny Rose on the way up to the cross. Archibald Rowe is the county judge and besides having the finest hair of the Frisians in the county, he keeps a few horses and donkeys in the field up from the crossroads. Go on up there now and see can you see Rose's ass over the hedge and the two of them will be falling over each other to get to the crossroads first. To see Rose ass. And when he asked them in the morning. Well did you see Rose ass? We didn't see any ass grandad. Well you didn't look hard enough. She'll be there tomorrow. You're a desperate man. Ulti says Rose. And the tears of laughter streaming down her cheeks. And that heifer looks fine today. Oh, I better come down and top that meadow in the next few days. There's a shocking lot of thistles. Aye and that ditch could do with a cleaning out. The rain is as good as blocked. I shall get the slash hook and come down again later. Maybe. Gracie Campbell would whiz by too and give Rose the Queen's wave. She prefers to be called Grace. But Gracie we call her much to her annoyance. You see, Gracie has notions. She also has a turkey's neck, which she uses to great advantage in the church choir of a Sunday. Gracie com commandeers all the solos and can bend and warble any hymn compliments of a surplus of sagging skin on her neck to the extent that the tune is unrecognisable due to the multiplication of notes, the result of manipulation of said sagging skin. Betty Grimes said she had a bag of apples for Rose and she'd probably drop them over later. But that's only an excuse. Jeez, I, I hope she doesn't call when I'm having me cup of tea. Rose can usually head her off at the gate, but if she gets the jump on her, she'll be round to the back door and on to the lovely kitchen tiles trying to wring from me what I got for the three Charolais bullocks at the mark last Saturday. I wouldn't mind, but it's her old fella puts her up to it. And if Gracie has a sagging neck, Betty's is as hard as the corns on her feet, for she'll ask out straight the most brazen of questions. Rose only laughs at me for letting her get to me. Isn't it funny all the same? There's only the two of us now. And despite all the time we spend together, when I'm out here, I can still hear her. And you know, she's either singing or laughing. If I hear her singing, I'll find myself singing along. And if I think I hear her laughing, I'll laugh out loud with her. And it'll be at the silliest thing. Aye. Shocking funny that, isn't it? The neighbours must think I'm often gone daft. Whoops. Better take these wellies off. Is the tea wet, Rosie? 